Welcome to another episode of the Commerce Lab by Econcy, the place of everything related to Amazon FBA, private level, and e-commerce. My name is Vincenzo Toscano, founder and CEO of Econcy, and today we bring you Tyler Offer, who is the founder and CEO of Retail Empire, where they specialize on everything that you need to do as an Amazon brand to start selling your products into retail shops. So I know this is a very interesting topic because in e-commerce, we always focus around, you know, selling your products online and everything online. But at the same time, I totally agree. And I know for a fact that there is so much potential when it comes to taking your products into retailers. And that's why, Tyler, I wanted to have you here today because you, I know you have extensive experience around that field. So it's a pleasure to have you here, Tyler. And how are you doing today, my friend? Very good. Thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure being with you. Um, yes, my uh, I'll I'll give you like a quick brief about myself. Sure. I've been working, thank you. working with with thank you. I've been working with the retailers for the last twenty years. That's what I do. Um, started my road back in Asia. I was twelve years um, producing for companies like Walmart, BCBG, and Costco, and I was doing a lot of garments. But mm-hmm. I also managed to establish one electric. Um, appliances uh, uh, brand of my own and I sold it to Costco in Canada and that was the first time when I understood the real potential of mm-hmm. retail I was already working with Walmart but then when it came to Costco I said okay this is the second retailer I'm working with yeah and 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 we're talking about 2000 two, three, four, even five and that was the beginning and and I've started to see a lot of people moving slowly but still moving to the e-commerce side, okay. but you're talking about Alibaba those days, and you're talking mm-hmm. about made in China.com and companies like that. Amazon yeah. was not in the field yet, but it came later, a few years later. But I've seen things happening. But then I established my own uh, tech accessories uh, um, brand, which I also managed to sell to retailers in the states. We reached out with this to 60 retailers selling on their shelves mm-hmm. on the retail spaces. Um, and that was that was like a signature on on this area for me, saying like, okay, I looked at it and I said, there's no point for me to try e-commerce or online because you know this is my field. That's what I do, and I know the yeah. best. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing I, I know how to do. So I continue with that. And since uh, 2017, I started to take Amazon sellers uh, to this journey of uh, moving their brand from uh, uh, from an online brand to become an offline brand as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, offline means you know not it's off anywhere yeah. but but offline means like physical stores yeah uh, just for the just for the you know for the protocol i would say uh right now in the usa there are more than two million physical stores brick wow. and mortar stores mm-hmm. now we're not talking we're not talking about you know uh, um, laundry stores i'm talking about stores that are selling products merchandise mm-hmm. okay so two more than two million. Uh, um, this is the number. There are approximately almost thirty thousand retailers across the U.S. A okay. retailer could be could be thirty five, forty stores. Okay. Uh, like Von Mauer, for instance, it could be eight hundred stores, like like Macy's, a bit less. It could be TJ Maxx with four thousand pieces, CVS with nine thousand nine hundred, or even Dollar Tree with sixteen thousand. Target, 000 stores. yeah, yeah. Or Target, yeah. So the, the the range is very big, but mm-hmm. usually when we're talking about retailer, we're talking about at least a few hundreds of stores, like Bastro, 170 stores, Cabilias, mm-hmm. who belong to the same company with 180 stores and so forth. Um, so yeah, still in the numbers, just so that people would know, to those who are, who are not aware of that, if you take the whole e-commerce in the United States, including Amazon, all the marketplaces and the small website, big website, all the e-commerce is not taking more than 15% of the market. That means that 85% wow. of the market okay. is not on your plate as a vendor, as an e-commerce vendor, Amazon vendor, Walmart vendor, whatever vendor you are. If you're not doing retail, you are ignoring 85% of the market. That's so and, interesting because I think most people think that it, it, e-commerce it, it, it is the opposite, it's the biggest, but it, it's good that you bring that to the table so people can see right, the, the huge difference. Right. Yeah, it's the power. <laughs> it's the power of the media. The media makes you believe in things. Yeah, that not the Amazon is everything. The Amazon is everything. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Everybody talks. I mean, Amazon is huge, but this is only one channel. Not to mention that you know, uh, we all know that that you know, you can wake up as an Amazon seller. Uh, at the morning, in the morning, 
and then you might get a message hopefully not but you might get a message like get hey, it done. <laughs> you're off your listing is off yeah. because whatever yeah. you didn't yeah. write on the product that it's uh, whatever yeah. mm -hmm. with chemicals and then go find a way you know to figure out how to to do it to get it back um back to be live and then you have lawyers and expenses and time being wasted and your whole business is on amazon or your whole business on your shopify mm. store yeah that's dangerous so a lot of Amazon sellers uh, in the last few years are approaching our company, Retail Empire, to make this move. So I would like to share some information today for those who wants to do, to do it sure. themselves. Um, and I'm, yeah. I mean, if you want to ask me questions, you can go ahead. Yeah, so, for sure. I, I think the, the, the first question that for sure I, I have already on the top of my head is, is basically what are the key considerations somebody needs to have before even approaching approaching a retailer, because you know it, it is it's nice uh, and great to think about going to you know putting your products into retailer, but the reality is that you need to meet certain criteria and take something in, in consideration before doing so. So maybe you can give us some insights around that. Yeah, definitely. So I divided myself to six blocks. Mm -hmm. I like it when it's points. You know, okay. I don't know why, but in any conversation that I have both it's with easier. my partner. Yeah, yeah, I'm always like number one, number two, number three, but it's easier like that. So six parts. So the first part would be the brief. The brief means like a short text of you describing your brand. So if I'm selling whatever, if I'm selling beautiful wooden chairs, mm -hmm. I need to describe the brand not as a wooden chair brand, but as an artistic whatever, something that comes with wood. Now you wouldn't go to GPT at the beginning, you can go to GPT, you can do it, it's okay, <laughs> but don't don't use that too much because yeah. people could already can already you know realize that this is not a human thing. A human thing. It's too good. So anyway, you write a brief about your company. You don't write about you sitting on the beach in Thailand five years ago and thinking about it, but you do write about the brand. Now, one thing they do like in in retail is seeing like um, micro brands, we call it the rise of the micro brands, mm -hmm. micro brands that are built on, you know, a small team of five, 10, 20 people in the office yeah. or, or wherever they are building this. One of them is the artistic side. The other one is the guy for logistics and so forth. Mm -hmm. So this is like, you know, a good frame of showing your company. But at the end of the day, what you want to show is the brand. What are you selling? Okay. This is the brief. In short, we can go into details, but... For now, this is the brief. Second part out of the six. The second part would be your branding. Now, okay. I divide the branding into two parts. The first part is your website. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about website. A lot of people think like, oh, I'm going to take someone from Fiverr. I'm going to have a website. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of templates out there. You can use them. They are amazing. Now you can use Midjourney or Dali or yeah. whatever it is. And even, you know. In uh, seconds, uh, you have a it, website. Yeah, make it yeah. even beautiful. But... There are certain principles in retail that when they look at your website, they could easily understand if you are an Amazon or online seller or you are someone who is building a real brand. Okay. How do they define that? So first of all, do not, by any means, do not write <laughs> a price, $49, erasing it, and uh, write $32. Yeah. Do a drop not shipping, do that. Drop shipping tactic. <laughs> Yeah. Right. It's a, it's, it's a funnel. <laughs> this is not a website. It's a funnel. Don't do that. Why don't do that? I mean, you can do it in your funnel, but when yeah. it comes to retailer, they look at this and, and I'm, I'm talking, I'm saying retailers, but actually the buyers, category manager, uh, GMM, SVP, mm -hmm. those are the titles. They are the one who look at it and say, okay, this looks like a funnel. It, it feels like an e-commerce. You know, this mm -hmm. is like someone to drag me in to buy it right yeah. now because it's a special price, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. It's your own platform. It's your own place. You don't need, you're not competing with everybody. It's not like you sit for 49 and then 33. Yeah. And then on the other <laughs> side, your comp competitor is selling it for 50, right? There's no, like, it's your place. It's your house. It's your, it's your kingdom. Uh, so that's one small tip, but then you can look at other stuff like stars. A lot of people are putting those five Amazon stars on their website as mm -hmm. if this was, a, oh, wow, it's five stars. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, even with Trustpilot, you could you do fake things it. that are yeah. not really legit, right? And people know that. So mm -hmm. you don't need those five stars. You just, you need something more authentic. The main thing that I would use for website is not only to be simple, but also to use a lot of lifestyle. Now, if you have products and you're showing only the products, it's okay. But if you show them in lifestyle way, then it's a whole different story. And if you really want to leverage that, you want to have 
a video, but not normal video, because most of the other vendors would put the video and it's always the same music. I don't know why this, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's, because it's a free music or something. It's like a template, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a template, like, oh, again, this tick, 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 tick. No, man, forget that. 3D rendering. This is the best thing to put in your homepage at the first part on top of everything. Mm -hmm. Your product, even if it's a shoe, it's a speaker, it's a whatever, bananas, you can yeah. put them and running like, you know, circling from side to side okay. in 3D. It doesn't cost too much, but the effect gives the, the other person like, wow, this was, you know, taken into consideration. Someone yeah. thought about this, yeah. not just put, uh, uh, took a video, taking it, you know, from, from, um, from Fiverr yeah. or whatever. So yeah. anyway, those are small tips, but you can find a lot of information out there about how to do. And this is the key term, retail oriented. So retail oriented okay. website. Retail oriented brief, retail oriented packaging. We'll talk about packaging. Mm -hmm. That was number two. Number three is the second part of the branding. We said two parts. So the yeah. first one was website. The second one is the catalog. Mm -hmm. Make it PDF. Do not do a catalog <laughs> with Word document. Yeah. Or Canvas or something Excel. like that. <laughs> right. These are basics, but I'm just saying. Now, here comes the thing. Why the branding are, you know, why is it one topic? that is divided into two because both of them has to be under the same language. Now, me and you, we speak English. Mm -hmm. You speak Italian, I speak Hebrew, I also speak Japanese and Chinese, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. But every language has its attributes. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if, you, uh, if you start speaking Italian, for instance, it will be more rolling than English. It will be more, something was, will be more musical, right? The Italian mm -hmm. language is more musical than other languages in general. Mm -hmm. At least the way I feel it. So anyway, you need to have your brand language. And how do you know your language? Well, first of all, you start from the basic, which is the color. And you can go out there on Google and find tons of information about what each and every color transmits. Like if it's, uh, for instance, if it's green, obviously, you know, green products, right? Mm -hmm. if, it, if it's black and white, obviously, you're trying to be a little bit more of a class. Plus, mm -hmm. there's other meanings as well. So blue orange all of these each and every color has its own uh its own like direction and mm -hmm. and feeling that it gives to the other side so you want to take that color and build your language from that even if you have two or three colors it doesn't matter okay. you still the language like look at benetton for instance benetton they didn't want to choose one color they want to be colorful but yeah. pay attention all their colors are happy colors you would yeah. not find like the same gray, tonality yeah yeah or a lazy yellow the yellow would be, you know, exploding yellow. It mm -hmm. wouldn't be lazy, right? That's yeah. their language because they want to transmit like something happy. Why? Mm -hmm. Because their target audience is around whatever, 18 to 45, not more than mm -hmm. that. It means that I cannot buy shirts there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was the three first parts. The fourth part would be packaging. Now, mm -hmm. everybody understands that if you're selling on Amazon a product and people are buying, you know, based on the picture they see on Amazon listing, it's mm -hmm. fine. So you can ship it even with a poly bag and nobody cares, right? Yeah. But it's nicer if someone would get like a box, like you have a box, the product is inside, they can open it. But here's the thing. First of all, cardboard, which is this kind of box, like, you know, cartoon, I would say cardboard. The main picture is this picture. This is a picture of my, my Logitech camera, my Brio. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so this picture, if you ask me, if I would be advising to Logitech, I would never take a, take a, take this as a packaging because this yeah. is very so basic. Say, this crop. Right. Yeah. Put a nice picture, clear one of the products, and even use a lifestyle one. On the sides, you can use information. Now, here is the thing. If you're doing something like this and Logitech, Logitech did it, you're doing the worst thing you could do because <laughs> this, is, this is your advertising space. Yeah, and, and you're wasting you it. it right. Who yeah. would, I mean... I mean, even if I had, you know, a, 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 an eagle eyes. Nobody's going to read it. it. Yeah. I can't read it. All I see here is icons of Windows. Wow. Yeah. Icons of Windows. That's why, yeah. I mean, mate, I mean, I paid for that quite a lot of money for this uh, yeah. um, freaking camera. Anyway. It's what the brand so, does. <laughs> the branding. <laughs> yeah. So you have your language already from branding and website. You can put it, implement that into the, into, into the box, into the packaging. And then if, if it's a light, lightweight product and you think that they're going to hang it in the store and you can mm -hmm. find this out on YouTube when you look at your competitors, you will want to add a J-hook, right? Mm -hmm. So they can hang it. But if it's not, then it could just be stuck. 
or you can use a J hook, which is foldable, and then they have both options: stacking it on shelf or hanging it on the hanger. So packaging, uh, yeah, picture, uh, your logo. It's important to have the logo, and that's it. This is a good thing they do, but I would do mm. it bigger because you know you're, yeah. you're not using the space you have here. And so also one was... one quick question in this because yeah. I think this is very interesting, uh, even for me. I think. When it comes to packaging, you may find that, you know, a lot of Amazon brands already have that going with the products that they send to Amazon. And sometimes the packaging is just not there uh, retail ready. So in this case, uh, I guess you would advise to these brands to have a different packaging just for retailers or how will it work in, 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 in that case? Well, it's case by case. Up till now, for tons of brands that I did, um, that I work with, only few, very few of them, we had to go back to okay. the table and redesign a new one. Usually, most of them would not really be brands that are selling in polybag and they are coming from scratch. Even if <laughs> no. they do, there are solutions. But, you know, as long as you do a good revision in terms of the, the artwork, not mm -hmm. the size, because changing the size is molding. We all know that. Molding mm -hmm. means expenses. Expenses means it's going to stuck your process for a longer time. Which is fine. I mean, some of the brands saying themselves, telling themselves like, okay, I want to do it 100% well. Mm -hmm. I want to make my brand like a brand, not mm -hmm. an Amazon product, a brand. There's a difference, right? Um, so yeah, you would invest a little bit more. That's but good. Yeah the, yeah, the reason why I wanted to mention is because I always say that I think regardless of what is your vision for the brand, always make from day zero your packaging retail ready because if the brand goes very well, then you are ready to to run into into stores. So exactly. To, good. Exactly. Awesome. And then and then the fifth and sixth part are going together. We're talking about competition and pricing. Mm -hmm. So competition, I mean, when you look at competition, let's say on on Walmart, it's quite easy. And you also have external tools to have it, softwares to, 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 to monitor everything. And you know that everyone, every product that is being sold there is being sold, is being sold by, by, by some competitor of yours. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to stores, you see products on their marketplace, but you don't know for sure if the same products are also in stores. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. like, like Walmart. Walmart has tons, thousands hundreds of, uh, sorry, tens of thousands of stores across the world, but you don't know what from their website sells also mm -hmm. uh, in stores. Now I know, how do I know? Because I know the buyers and I can tell you that you can know that as well. Here is a great tip. It's actually a secret that okay. I'm going to give you now. That's good. Uh, this... I got a nugget. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. If they are selling more than $80,000 a month on Walmart, they are being brought to the stores. Okay. How do you know how much they sell on Walmart? You see what's their, you know, what's the their tools. Uh, ranking, yeah. and the tools <laughs> and the ranking. Plus, when you take a brand and you Google it, you would know by the results if this is also an offline brand. How you would know that? If it's an online brand, all the results will be eBay, Amazon, Walmart, anywhere that they can sell and drop shippers can sell. But if you are seeing something more extensive like Costco, Target, mm -hmm. and then Macy's, Bloomingdale, Urban Outfitters, if the results are those, then, okay, you start to understand that this Retail is... focus. Your, yeah. Right. And this is what you want to look at. This is the competitor you want to look at. You don't want to look at the online competitor. You don't care about them. You want to yeah. look at those who are smart enough to go to retail. And when you do that, you first want to know their pricing. So if they are selling on Macy's and they sell for $100, probably Macy's is buying for $50 from them because this is what the markup is for Macy's. Yeah. But it's not the same thing for Nordstrom. Nordstrom would buy between 35 to 55 markup uh, on each and every product. Okay. okay. But in average, 50% of the MSRP, the retail price, would be the wholesale price. So we already know some of their pricing. Now you could guess, you could guess because you know how much it costs in China in the land cost. And if you see additional attributes, you can also guess what their cost is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can start comparing stuff saying, okay, what if I want to change my packaging to something absolutely amazing? I want to add $3 to the cost. I don't care, but I want to have something wow. Yeah. Then you look back at, at the competitor pricing and say, wait, wait, wait a second. If I do that, my cost is going to be $29, $30. Mm -hmm. 
while to my calculation, he's buying it for 22. Mm -hmm. And if he's buying it for 22 and I'm buying it for 30, I will not be able to compete his pricing, right? Yeah. Will it worth it to make this move or not? Okay. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can also go to YouTube and start typing names of brands plus unboxing. Like if you mm -hmm. find a brand, their name, let's say, is uh, uh, Fish Mindset. I'm just looking at the picture behind you. Yeah. Fish mindset, <laughs> fish mindset uh, tools. Okay, whatever. Then you you write the name plus unboxing, and then you see people that are doing those home videos, taking okay. those products to home, unboxing it. Then you see the packaging of your competitor, and you see the attributes, and you see what's good or bad about it, and you know what you need to do to be in the game. Okay. Yeah. That was the that was the the, the comp competition. So it goes together with pricing. You know, now you understand why, because then you understand the pricing. Yeah. Pricing. In general, you have two times of multiplying by two. Meaning, if my product costs me, say, $12 in China, okay. $13, by the time it gets to the warehouse in USA, either Jersey, LA, Miami, wherever it is, the price would be, let's say, just for the example, $15. Okay. If my, if my LDP, landed cost, some people call it COG, cost of goods, would be $15. I want to sell it wholesale for 30. I want to double. Okay. But the 30 means that the retailer would need to do 60 for okay. the cancel. Okay. Interesting. So 15, 30, 60. But this is the benchmark. From here, we start to play. Like if you go and work with TJ Maxx, because they are off price, they would ask the $60 product, they were asked to buy it for approximately between sixteen to eighteen dollars, because they work on around twenty-five to thirty percent off of MSRP. Okay. But if you right, but if you go to companies like um, um, Urban Outfitter, they would pay flat half, thirty dollars, no questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, it 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 differs. Basically, the rules are, uh, as I mentioned, fifteen, thirty, sixty, but. Uh, when it comes to off-price retailers, the pricing, the wholesale price have to go down because they are they have to be competitive and because they have the volume, of course. Yeah. These are the six tools you want wow. when, you consider, when you consider retail. I mean, this is very general, right? I yeah, can talk sure. hours about it. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. I mean, thank you very much for sharing that. Yeah, I, I, I think this is so useful. You mentioned so many things that people will not think about, like, you know, everything that you mentioned on the website and the branding and now the even the price i didn't know they would do the twice a uh, rule that you just mentioned is crazy um but i think another question now just comes to my mind straight away after this is basically let's say a brand has all this into their hands like they're meeting the criteria in terms of branding and and so on i would say that maybe and you you can clarify this for the audience that some of the challenges that you could encounter is how to convince these retailers even after having this criteria, because maybe you need to show them that you're already selling certain volume outside of uh, uh, those retailers. You need to show them some history of the brand. So besides all of this, do they actually want to see like a long history of the brand? Like it needs to be in the market for two, three years already. You need to have certain volume. Or sometimes you see brand new brands that because they have an amazing product, they jump in straight away. Well, you see both. Some of them are asking a lot of questions. I just had that. Uh, these questions from uh, Bass Pro last okay. night with one brand that they want to they want they want to go to the stores, and and but a lot of retailers don't really care if you're there for a year, five or ten because at the end of the day, if you have good products yeah. and it fits it fits the stores, that's all Who they cares? need, you know. I yeah. mean, right? They're not taking risks because hey, payment terms in retail space is always net plus. They get the goods. And then you start to count 10, 20, 30 days until you see your money. So there's no risk on their side. The only yeah. risk for them is to work with someone who is not aware of how retail works. And then it's going to cost them with a lot of work and a hassle. Mm. But that's not a big risk, right? But it's still something to consider. That's okay. why some of the vendors, um, well, those who are working with us, they want us to be in the process. And we are in the process when it comes to vendors. Because, you know, you have to know what to answer, how to play the game, what are the terms. Sometimes, you know, you get an email like, I just I just posted on my on my WhatsApp group uh, um, earlier. I have a group of retail tips. 
uh, that I got an email from from this uh, from not from Buspo from REI and and if you look at it as a as a non retail person you would like is this what is this English Chinese what is this like you don't know what is written there so many yeah. terms <laughs> yeah, you know I as a person who works more than twenty years in retail still was struggling with this email because like the terms were like you know tracing yeah. through the roof as if mm. as if you know as if you were born to another language. <laughs> 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 wow. so uh, yeah but as long as you have your products are interesting okay. for them and, and, and so yeah that's that's the main thing good and you have to keep in mind like you don't necessarily have to be that special i mean obviously if you come up with you know super common product it will be harder yeah like but, a garlic press yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> but but still surprisingly some very common products that i would even define them as commodities because they're so common uh, they're still selling in retail as well because you know vendors are leaving, closing, moving. Mm -hmm. You have better, whatever. yeah. You have better right. pricing. There's always, yeah. Right, there's like always that. holes in the retail where you can, you know, Enter. find your niche and go inside. Good. Uh, and now on top of all this, I think one challenge that maybe you see a lot, uh, and this is something that I bet uh, any brand that jump into retail could struggle, is that as you mentioned, the payment terms. You know, you need to basically finance all the inventory by yourself and have the muscle yes. in terms of cash to That's wait true. one month, two months before getting some money back to keep ordering. So I think, can you can you share some of that uh, and how yes, it so works? Because it can it can be difficult for some people to keep up with the orders from retailers without having the money. Actually, yeah, that's true. So when you do when you do retail, obviously you're trying to do it the same way you do any other business in the world. You go step by step. Mm -hmm. I remember myself six or seven years ago, I was supposed to get a huge order from Starbucks. Okay. Now, this was the first time I worked with them. I sent them a prototype based on their cap, but I just made that cap that the, the, the top part was a Bluetooth speaker and the bottom okay. was a power bank. Something okay. really beautiful. They loved it. They wanted to take it to the whole national <laughs> store, uh, uh, coffee store wow, across the US. And I didn't take the order because I thought, hey, it's risky. I mean, this the order value was, I mean, I think four or five times more than what we've been doing a wow. year. Wow. So I was like, I mean, I could be making a lot of money here, but I could be crushing my ass and, you know, paying for this mistake the whole, my whole life. And yeah. I thought like, you know, I had a lot of good chunk of orders and I thought like, okay, I'm not taking this. It's too risky. So step I asked by them, step. Yeah. Yeah. I asked them to start with lower quantities and they just wouldn't, wouldn't agree. So, we just left it there. Yeah, just because like worst that. case scenario, if you put all the money and then the cup doesn't sell, it's on you then. Yeah. No, that's not a problem. That's okay. not the problem because this is no not consignment. As long as you ah, sell it, okay. them, that's it. It's on them to sell. Okay. But there are other things in the process. Let me give you an example. First of all, you want to grow in terms of finance. It's hard to finance. So okay, you can you can find a factor. There are a lot of factors. Factors are companies that knows what's happening in retail. They can finance your orders A to Z from China's production facility up to the point where it's in the retailer warehouse and you need to wait. They can finance everything. That's not a big deal. But then as a company, you don't want to grow from 10 bucks to 1 million, right? Because this is going to kill your business. Mm -hmm. The load of work you're going to have, the load of tents you're going to have, everything. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I had an order with Macy's at the same time that I had that one with uh, Starbucks. Now, Macy's wanted to put an order of $1.5 million. And I said, guys, this is too much. I'm scared. Can we do it lower? <laughs> and they were saying, yeah, we're fine. We went back and forth, back and forth. We ended up doing $850,000 order. I think that was the number. Okay. More or less. Uh, and because of all the things that were happening in my business and I was working, as I mentioned before, with 60 retailers back at those days. Right now we're yeah. working with 250. 250 retailers, but it was different. I was just in my beginning. 60 retailers, my desk is like, you know, crushing for more. <laughs> yeah. I ended up I ended up with chargebacks because of labels mistakes, wow. shipping mistakes, ASN mistake, acknowledged shipping notice, all those small things, logistic stuff. That you didn't I account up, for. Yeah. yeah, I ended up paying more than sixty thousand dollars just for the star uh, chargebacks. Wow, just for that. So mm. you know, if uh, that 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 was that was my good alert saying, hey, if something like that's gonna happen with Starbucks, 
imagine you might, you, you might <laughs> you're end gone up, forever like, gone forever yeah. i mean you could you could get like easy one million dollar charges easily and that yeah. was when i had 12 girls working with me in, in a new york office and they were experts but still the charge but came so anyway wow uh, that's it's, yeah it's that's a, a good story yeah, yeah good Amazing. So now I think to start concluding uh, today's episode, I, I think I want to bring to the table retailing part because I know that's what you do on a daily basis. And I know a lot of people may ask themselves, okay, you know, I feel I'm, I'm, you know, I'm checking some of these boxes. I may want to reach out to your team and work with you. So maybe give us a little bit of, about how the process looks like uh, um, and yes, give us some course. insights. Yeah. Right. So, um, so our process is quite simple. We do the sales part. We take a brand. We we'll look at it. We we'll start thinking, you know, start thinking like, where is it going to match? Where is it not going to match? And we have a model of subscription because we've been working with a lot of Amazon sellers in, during down during the years, and we kind of understood that the best model would be working on subscription model. That means that you're running into um, a link that I will obviously give you later. Yeah, uh, for sure. That link is like describing. It's the name of the service is Sales Tube. And because this is the tube for sales, that's what we do. Yeah, and then fun. we we divide those sales effort into three parts. We take the brand, we make sure that everything is in place, you know, catalog, the website. If you need anything, you're getting all the material from me and from my team, videos and everything that is included in the subscription. Uh, and basically, we also work on based on percentage because the subscription awesome. is just meant for some expenses on our side, which I will explain. But our goal is to have orders and commissions because if we don't have that, then we can close the business. Yeah. Anyway, three layers of sales. This is what we do. The first layer is me and my partner from Canada. Uh, we are w walking through a list of 3,000, almost 3,000 buyers that we work with on a daily basis. These are buyers that we know. We know them. We either had order with them recently or right now having or going to have. So when we email those buyers, they know where we come from, but we cannot just, you know, send like massive emails to mm -hmm. them because it's going to destroy the business. So we have yeah. to go picky one by one to choose them and see which one are matching uh, to which brand yeah. and then, yeah, make the match. And if they don't, then we have to pull the strings asking, hey, can you get me to talk with the HBC buyer, Health and mm -hmm. Beauty, or can you talk with, can I have the, the toys buyer, please? And I'm getting response because they know me. So awesome. that's the first layer. And this is what takes most of the efforts in my business. If I could automate that, I would yeah, probably, <laughs> I would probably could skip 50% of my day at work. Wow. This is like, this is taking all my time. The relationships, basically. Yeah. Relationship and sorting the list in a way that like, you know, I, I, I couldn't wake up in the morning, look at the brand and think like, oh, I know who that, who it's going to match. I mean, there's yeah. 3000 buyers. I have to sit there and think like, will this match Neiman Marcos or... Mm -hmm. Or, or Lord and Taylor or Bass Pro or whatever, or Dick's yeah. Sporting Goods. Anyway, second second thing we do, and this is what my team is doing, mm -hmm. uh, are doing, they take the brand and they start looking for match in terms of the uh, uh, special channels. Now, special channels is the marketplaces, Walmart.com, Costco.com, Home Depot.com, and so on and so on. Not Amazon. We're not doing Amazon by any means. I have yeah. no idea about Amazon. Okay. Uh, other special channels we work with are TV segments, like Good Morning America at ABC Channel. Awesome. We work with uh, HSN, QVC, mm -hmm. and some other uh, segments like that. We work with a few magazines, media companies, and local wholesalers across the states. So these are the special channels. This is what my team is doing. I'm on, I'm on top of it, obviously, but they do it. They do the match. Subscription yeah. boxes as well, by the way. We spoke about subscription boxes. This is an amazing industry of wow millions yeah. of dollars yeah. in subscription if you don't know what subscription boxes are you have to google that this is amazing <laughs> <Yeah>. uh <laughs> but we won't talk about it so it's a whole podcast yeah. that we could for talk sure about. we need to do this... another one just about that one i'm interested exactly about that. exactly yeah. yes <laughs> and the third thing we do on on sales i mentioned you see it's always numbered six yeah. box for the winter readiness now it's three for the sales so the third thing we do we are running tons of softwares to reach out to more retailers. I work right now, we work with like, uh, as I mentioned, 200, about 250 more or less uh, retailers. And we know that there are almost 30,000, as I mentioned before. So I know that I'm, you know, far from being in the whole market. And when I take a brand, I don't want to sell it to three or four store uh, uh, retailers. I want to, you know, 
I want to splash it all over the place. And mm-hmm. for doing that, I have to reach out to more retailers. So what we do, we're running a lot of softwares that are first reaching out to prospects, getting yeah. us the prospect, not reaching out, getting us the prospects. Like who is, we're checking like who is the, the buyers that we need, what's their email addresses and so forth. Then we have other softwares uh, that are doing the reach out sending the email upon us. And then we have a lot of uh, uh, hundreds of uh, email inboxes because we don't use services like MailChimp. Yeah. We don't sell hot emails, only cold emails, one by one, one by one. By that, mm. not only we're not spammers, but also we get, you know... Personalizing. Personal, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a team dedicated for that because when you send approximately between 80 to 100, 200,000 emails a day, you're going to get thousands of emails <laughs> back. So you have to sort them down. Like, where's... Where's the gold? What's yeah. going to go to the garbage? Where's the gold? So that's what we do. So these are the three layers that are included in our sales tube channel. That's what we do. That's and awesome. uh, yeah. That, thank you, Tyler. I appreciate that. So uh, I'm going to make sure for sure to put all your links down in the description so people can reach out and get in contact with you and your team. I'm pretty sure a lot of people is going to find this very interesting because, you know, we don't really talk about getting to retail uh, often. And I think it's huge when, when it comes to, you know, scaling your business forward so it's been a pleasure Tyler I'm sure I'm gonna have you again in the future and in the meantime well, one I more last you. thing yeah one more last thing before I go I almost forgot about it so coming up soon around March I think I'm gonna launch with a team of very famous names from USA I can't say the names right now but very famous ones you all know them we're going to launch uh, uh besides what we do we're going to launch a master class which is going to be something huge Awesome. That is going to include, even include our contacts that we're going to give away. Okay, good. So just Can't wait. Testing. Thank you. I'm yeah. going to put that as well. Thank you, Tyler. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a yeah. Lot. Thank you for Thank you time. for having me today. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate that. All right.